In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 29, we read, And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, you might believe. Sadly, a normal fact of life is that most people only believe after a certain event takes place. The old worn-out comeback, I'll believe it when I see it, has been played out time and time again. Well, be prepared to actually see it here and now. But before doing so, some ground rules must be laid out to prevent doubt. The Bible plainly instructs us that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. As Christians, we are told never to give our own opinion of what a prophetic symbol means. We must allow the Word of God to define its symbols on its own. Our private interpretations are useless. There are 404 verses in the book of Revelation, and out of these 404 verses, 278 of them carry the bulk of the prophetic message of that book. Did you know that all 278 of those verses can be found almost word for word in all the other books of the Bible? In other words, the Bible defines itself perfectly. We must never let anyone give us their opinion or interpretation of what a Bible prophecy means. We must let the Bible define the Bible. In fact, that's how Jesus taught the Bible truths when he visited us 2,000 years ago. That's also how you can identify false prophets and false teachers. Just hear what they have to say, then open a Bible to see if what they're saying actually matches up with what the Scripture says regarding a certain symbol in prophecy. Peter Stoner states in his book, Science Speaks, that if there were only eight prophecies in the entire Christian Bible, there would be a one in 100 quadrillion chance that any one man could fulfill all eight prophecies. He then illustrates how large this number is by suggesting you picture the entire state of Texas covered two feet deep in silver dollars. Now paint one of the coins red and mix it into the pile. Then blindfold a man and set him anywhere in the state you want. Afterward, tell the man he can travel anywhere in Texas for as long as it takes. His task is that he can only pick up one coin and it must be the red one he picks up. He must be 100% accurate on the very first try. It would be far easier for him to do that than it would be for eight prophecies to be fulfilled in one man. That's how amazing Christian prophecy is. Certainly the same odds must apply to Antichrist. In this video, we will push the envelope just a little further. We'll look at 11 prophecies of Antichrist to see if there is only one entity on earth that matches all 11. Doing so will hopefully erase all doubt. Prophecy number one. Revelation 17.3 says, I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Since the Bible defines its own prophetic symbols, what does it say about a woman and what does it say about a beast? In Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 2 it says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So woman is a church in prophecy. What is a beast in prophecy? Daniel chapter 7 verse 17 says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings. Prophecy says the woman, which we just found is a church, will join a beast, which is actually a nation. Where on earth do you see a church and a nation joined together as one political entity today? Daniel 7.23 also stated that doing so would make it utterly unique than any other nation before or after it. This fulfillment can only be seen in the nation called Vatican City. Furthermore, Vatican City is also the Roman Catholic Church simultaneously. Prophecy number two. Revelation 17.3 says, I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast having seven heads. John the Apostle declares the beast, which of course is the nation, this woman or church, is sitting on has seven heads. What do these seven heads represent in prophecy? During this vision, the angel actually explains what those seven heads mean in reality. Later on, in verse 9 of the exact same book, he tells John, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Mountain is also defined as hill in the Strong's Concordance number 3735. The Roman Catholic Church admits in the Catholic Encyclopedia on page 529, it is within the city of Rome, called the City on Seven Hills, 
that the entire area of Vatican State proper is now confined. Prophecy number three. Revelation 13, verses 17 and 18 says, The name of the beast, or the number of his name, is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. The prophecy states there will be a man at the head of this church and state entity that will have a name with a numeric value on it. That value will be 666. Truth is, the Vatican government must always have a pope stand as the leader. When a pope dies, a new pope is elected immediately to stand in the same position as the previous pope. He carries his office, his title, and his name beyond the grave. All popes have the exact same title in the office of pope. What is the name they must carry together? The letters inscribed in the Pope's mitre are these. Vicarious Filii Dei, which is the Latin for Vicar of the Son of God. Catholics hold that the church, which is a visible society, must have a visible head. Christ, before his ascension into heaven, appointed St. Peter to act as his representative. Hence, to the Bishop of Rome, as head of the church, was given the title Vicar of Christ. Interesting thing about the Latin language is that it is both their Roman alphabet as well as their Roman numeral system collectively. So all one needs to do is spell the name Vicarious Filii Dei and then add it up, as you see on the screen before you. It equals 666. There are actually over a dozen titles to the office of Pope. Each equals 666 individually. Prophecy number four.